All right, I was going to take a chance on some of these lines, but the more I look at this one in particular, um, it's not just that the it's not just that the jacket's off of it and, and the rubber coating. It's the fact that I see this rust here. It's really it's got me kind of worried. And this one of all the hoses here is well, if anything's easy to get to, it's that one. Um, I'm going to replace it. I, I know the jacket's off some of the ones at the bottom, but they were sitting in oil all the time, so I, I think they may be okay. Those are the ones I'm going to take a chance and maybe just buy some uh, field repair if, if it ever happens. Um, maybe have some emergency stuff with me. I've already gone ahead and loosened these up, so I'm going to spin these off. And I, I measured this out at 46 inches um, by my tape. And over at uh, TSC, they had off-the-shelf stuff that was 48 inches. So 46 versus 48, a margin of error on my measuring. Um, I think it's going to work okay. Um, since I'm not destroying anything with the hose, I should be able to get this out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. All right, I got the first one in there. Um, so it's running up. Got a new one. I'm going to put the outside one on. And then we're going to try her all out again. So let's run the next one. All right, both hoses are on. Put them in there. Um, I'm hoping that the main hoses, even though the protective coating is off, they didn't seem like there's any rusted or frayed wires. Let's just hope they'll hold up. Let's go with a time to experiment here. <laughs>
right, the 450 wasn't running, so I've taken the fuel filters off. I think there's just a bit of dirt in that fuel, in that tank, so no wonder she stopped running. I'm going to clean the screen up, clean this all up, put new filters on it. Let's see if she uh, behaves. All right, this was just too messy to show. Um, actually, it looks like I've got a little leak here. Um, crap. So I got a little tiny wheat leak there. I had to actually take this line off and blow it back into the tank. When I opened the valve up, I couldn't get anything to come out. So I blew it back till it bubbles really good and it was flowing good now. Looks like I got to deal with an O-ring here. And then I'm going to try to start. All right, well, here goes nothing. Let's see what we get. Hopefully I don't have to bleed the crack injector lines. That wouldn't surprise me. Here it goes. Uh, how much you want to make a bet? I got to crack injector lines. Ah, I got a yucky. That's a little air. Maybe I'll get her lucky. Ah, the battery's gone. Uh, all right, got time to go get a battery. This one just didn't have enough to do that. on some of my gauges. First thing I want to attack is, is the oil pressure gauge. You know, I had this blocked up with safety and um, the gauge is right here underneath this fuel fill between the fuel filter here and the, and the starter solenoid. I'm going to go ahead and take off uh, the starter cable here just to, just to help, help try and improve a little bit of access. I've got the fuel lines a little bit in the way. But let's, uh, let's take that off. All right, I got the old sending unit out. Suffice to say, I don't think this was doing a whole lot of anything. It was a mess. It was bad. The wire was long gone. Um, I found it was actually easier to go in from the control side. I could reach down behind the brake pedal and uh, I could reach it. Uh, but I got it off, so we're going to go get the new mechanical one. And then we're going to go into that same spot. And figure out how long my line needs to be and then uh, hook up the gauge and we'll move on to the next. All right, so my adapter is in. I took the camera off the tripod, get in here a little closer so you can see where this is. There's not a lot of, again, this is not, something else. There's not a lot of documentation about. I actually wasn't sure where the, that, that uh, electronic sensor was. I had to do a lot of looking around, but I finally found it. Um, so now I've got the... Uh, Got the adapter in, we'll run the copper line. We're going to a mechanical gauge now. Um, get that put in, uh, run it up, put it in the, into the console. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna attack my, uh, next thing I'm gonna be looking at is the uh, water temp. And you can see there's nothing hooked up here either. Uh, you can see again that there was, I don't know what I've got going on there, but I got nothing going on there. And we're gonna run, we're gonna run that, uh, and then finally I'll do the the, uh, the ammeter, and I'll have all three, and then I will figure out where the trans temp sensor is, and we'll get that one run. So next is the oil line.
looks like. All right, as usual, I'm running out of light. The oil rot line is now run. Let's see if you can see it back there. There it is. There's the copper going on up. I ended up following the uh, channel for the uh, um, throttle control. Hopefully that doesn't cause a problem. I don't think it will. So what I'm going to do now is my first test, see if we have a, a functioning oil gauge. I left myself enough. Let's see if I can climb up here. Now look. Right, looks, like my phone shut. looks like my phone shut off right when I was trying to video. Anyway, let's, let's check for all these. I don't see any leaks there. It's not leaking at the gauge. More importantly, Really good oil pressure. Well, that's good to see. That was nice to see. I've got good oil pressure. Something I just had no idea whether I did or not. All right, one gauge down. Um, I think I'm going to tackle, try and tackle the temperature gauge next. <laughs> 